Yo. What's up, people? Yo, episode man. 19. This part two, man. It's episode 19 of the report card, man. You know me. I'm Dane Diddy. Yep. Your co host, Solo Yomingo. Yeah. And if you guys been listening like you should have been to episode <laughs> 18, you already know we about to do Snow the Product. Yep. You know, uh, what is the joint? Halfway there, part one. Yep. Kodak Black, Little Big Pot. We got YG Still Breezy. And we got R. Kelly 12 Play. Man, yep. we're we going to go ahead and just jump straight into it, man. We're going to do the Snow the Product first, man. Halfway there, part one. Claudia Alexandria Feliciano. She was born in San Jose, California. Her parents are Mexican immigrants. Man, viva la raza, man. <laughs> I don't know what that meant, bro. That, that's <laughs> a shout out to them, man. You know, we old people. I, I, I take your word for it. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, Snow, she's Mexican-American. You know, she got her start in music at an early age of six. She was performing in talent shows in uh, her grandfather's Marachi band in uh, Redwood City. She grew up in San Diego, California, uh, which is where she uh, first got into hip hop. Uh, she started uh, taking music serious at, at, eight, at age 19. She changed her name from Snow White the product to Snow the product after Disney claimed a copyright infringement against her. Uh, she dropped that. Uh, uh, that might have that might have worked out in her favor, actually. I think this sounds yeah, better. Snow the product sounds better than Snow right. White the product, definitely. Uh, and not only that, if looking at her, Snow White the product wouldn't have sounded right. Like right. it doesn't sound right when you look at her. Right. You know, she dropped out of uh, San Diego Mesa College to pursue music. Uh, she moved to Texas and she started doing shows. She did South by Southwest, um, Southwest, South by Southwest back to back years, and um, she got a break when uh, two of her songs that were independent um blew up from her um unorthodox album it went viral on the internet multiple labels contacted her but she settled on atlantic and this is snow's first ep but this is actually her seventh project what do you think of snow the product man and this joint fire fire um i, I only Hot fire. yeah yeah i only noticed uh or found out that she was um spanish after listening to the music I had no idea What she looked like Or anything Yeah dog I don't know What she's talking about In the final song You know it's all Spanish Nuestra I, I, canción is fire That that joint is Our song That's what it means Nuestra canción Means our song The okay. joint is fire though Um I had Yeah I had no idea She was Spanish Um Her positive music Is dope She's not using sex In her music Uh She shows A lot of signs Of creativity Um this joint ain't it's short and sweet just like um like Vic joint but um I gave it a 91 that's a B plus I think this joint is fire yeah we we real far away on this yeah. on, the, on the scoring on this uh, I I don't I gave it a 72 damn I think it needed work I I think Snow the product is really really dope I really do like she's really really dope I've heard her spit like hell on the first joint right Focus did the beat she kills it nights is actually a cool song you know what i'm saying you actually get to see her singing ability which isn't really all that you know what i'm saying it's, sat it's satisfying yeah yeah it's cool um get low get low is uh it's a dope song i like the beat i think the hook was weak you know uh I, I you know i don't really you know the song that you said means our song i don't, I don't know what she was saying I, I i can't really judge it you know, uh, <laughs> she's got a dope writing style. She's got a dope flow. You know what I'm saying? She, I think she needs better production. Than that, pro you know, don't get me wrong. No cuts production was ridiculous. Right. Nights will work along the pop crowd. But I, I just, I've heard her way better. I love and, that too much interlude. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Too much and uh, too much to take the interludes. Yeah, they're pretty dope interludes. But, I mean, this is a, it's a short EP. I have high hopes for the album. I'm pretty sure she's gonna wreck the album. I think it's supposed to come out next month in uh, August. Uh, in, yeah, in August. Uh, yeah. I mean, we're just kind of far apart on this, man. She, but I, I love Snow the product, man. She's dope. I've, always, I've heard her. You know, she's worked with Bob. She's worked with Tech Nine. She's worked with uh, Crooked Eye. Like, right. yo, she's she's a beast. Right. Yeah. Like that first joint, no cut. Uh, when I heard that she's actually rapping, rapping, I'm like, man, this girl could rap. And um, and then she's not talking nothing crazy. It's just like with content again. No, she actually has bars. Right. Well, um, and then um, and then when she the next song comes on and she's singing, I'm like, 
this girl could do both you know what i'm saying and um that she's good at both i'm not saying she's the best singer or she's the best lyricist yeah yeah but she's well rounded right she's well rounded though and um my favorite song on the joint was the joint where she was singing in spanish but the uh the interludes man the interludes had my caught my attention cuz um She's talking that real talk on there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, she's kind of talking about frustration. And right. Yeah, yeah, pretty dope, man. I, I really like Snow the Product, man. I'm, I am I really wish she would have signed with Tech 9 because I think that would have did wonders for her, man. He's got a great production team over there and everything. I don't know if Atlantic is putting everything they can into her because I think she could be big. She could be bigger than Nicki because she's actually she actually spits all the time. Right. You know what I'm saying? And... I mean, it, it's when, when you say bigger than Nicki, it's, it's a lot. You got to be able to market against that. You know what I'm saying? Um, or not even against it. Like, you, you were putting them against each other. But I'm not I'm not trying to do yeah, that. I'm not, not trying to do not, that at not all. Not at all. Um, when, we, when we speak on that, we mean, um, you know, on the level. Uh, for her to reach that level, you know, uh, maybe but, she'll... Hey, man, let's not act like Nicki ain't had no fun, man. I always get, I have no help. You know, I always got to throw that out there, man. If it wasn't for Taylor Swift... <laughs> Nicki Minaj would not be as big of an artist as she is now. Right. Like, Nicki was dope. I love Nicki's first album. I think her last two albums, I mean, we gonna get to reviewing them eventually. Right. But I like her first album a lot. I like Super Bass when I first heard it. I was one of those guys that was like, yo, check this out. And, like, my homeboy was like, nah, it's too poppy. It's, nah, I don't like right. that. I don't like that. I was like, nah, it's dope. It's different. And then she put out her second album where she pretty much tried to find that sound again, and it did not work. Like, she went and started working with Lady Gaga's producers and stuff like that, and it just don't sound right to me. And, and ever it, since then, nikki has been trying to find that pocket, and when that didn't work, she tried to come back to the streets, and she put out, you know, Roman Reloaded with a couple more rap songs on there. Like and and that that's when she lost me because it was Roman Reloaded, Pink Reloaded, Pink Pink, pink that Pink Print Reloaded, Pink Print. It, I just got lost. And I, I, I don't and even we pay gonna attention. get to this in a minute. <laughs> but I hate when an artist uses something that's already established because you all, you putting a lot of pressure on yourself right. to perform. And when you don't perform, when you don't perform, it, it don't work out. Like I know we ain't reviewing Nicki right now, but the Pink Print was like a breakup album. You know, her and Safari, she finally admitting all the stuff in the relationship. Cool. But it just doesn't work as an album. Like, an album, man, we, we might have to review that. So, just so we could get <laughs> Clarify, more depth. Right. Go get in more depth. But Snow the Product, she has the ability, she has the rap ability, she has the bars, she has the look. She could be very marketable. She, she can sing. She, I'm pretty sure she might even be able to act too. Right. You know, uh, she might have to date a rapper or something. <laughs> she might have to start some Twitter beef or something. <laughs> some. <Something>. Oh, <God. laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> you know how it goes, though. Yeah, man. You, you know, all she needs is a little bit of help. Nikki had help. All right. she needs is a little bit of help. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right, little big Pac, Kodak Black. Right. <laughs> you gonna name your project Little Big Pac, man? Do you know what I expect from you now? Not, not hot fire. Right. All right. Look, before, all right. D- Deshawn, Deshawn, Octave. He was born in Pompano Beach, Florida. You know, both Kodak Black's parents are Haitian immigrants. Shout he started out to rapping the Zoe. at uh, yeah. Shout out to the Zoe. Yeah, he started rapping at twelve. Uh, his favorite rappers and his influences are Lil Boosie and Chief Keef. I'm now, surprised he didn't name Gucci. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised he didn't too. Uh, right. He's been locked up several times. An extensive rap sheet. I'd be surprised if he actually got out of jail anytime soon. Uh, I couldn't really find much information on him to tell you guys, actually. To be perfectly honest with you, man. Uh this is his fourth project i don't even know if it's his fourth mixtape or what you know like i said you can't really find enough a whole bunch of information on him what do you think a little big pop man um it's all right like i can listen to him and i can't listen to him um i like that song skirt but uh i don't even think this was on this album man this some old bullshit. uh 
He sounds like a watered down Gucci and Boozy. Yeah. And I, the some of the production was tight. Yeah. S- some of the lyrics was okay. Uh, everything 1K. Yeah. Uh, can I? I like the lyrics on Can I. Boozy killed his verse on Slade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, on vibing in this bit. Uh, I like his delivery. Right. There's a whole bunch of songs up here like uh, Too Many Years. It's got that like come up inspirational feel. The hook is right, but his verses are just weak. You know, it, it's the album started out good. I think the last song where he's uh, reading a letter and then Blood Sweat. T- I, look, man, this album needed work, dog. I gave it a 73. <laughs> we, we, we are on the same thing. I gave it a 70. Yeah, this, this album. It, uh, it, it I don't really know what to say, man. I, when I first heard Everything 1K, I thought I was listening to a young Lil Wayne. Because like, oh, yeah, I heard yeah, that, so much that, promising. That, I was like, yo, this dude about to be dope. That's what I meant to write down in my notes also. I'm glad you brought it up. He sounds like a baby Wayne on the first joint. Like He sounds like young Wayne. If he would have kept that up for the whole joint, this would have been a great joint. But then you can actually hear Stuff Suffered. I don't know if it was because he's locked up. Maybe Everything 1K is like the last song he recorded. I mean, he's he, he released this while he was locked up. So I, I don't know, man. I don't know what the current situation with him is. Well, the song Letter is this cool where he's actually reading a letter he got while he's in jail. Well, he he's she's showing that there's some kind of talent there. So we got something to look forward to. At least do do we? I mean, we, we'll give him another shot. I guess. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, false imprisonment, dog. That's a felony. I don't know if he's getting out of jail, dog. Right. I mean, on that level, yeah, we got to. And you know this, man. <laughs> right. We got to hope he gets his legal situation straight yeah, ho- first. Hopefully, you know he gets, hopefully he gets out, man. Right. You know, but it and, and stays clean. Like you got a record deal. I, don't get me wrong, man. We like I said on last year. I know a lot of these rappers are broke, but. He has the potential to make a lot of money. Right. And ain't no reason messing that up, arm robbing anybody. Like, yo, if that if that's what your homeboys want to do, apparently you need to change your homeboys. Yeah. You, 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 in, a, you in a different <laughs> world now, man. Unless you want to spend the rest of your life in jail. You know, now the podcast got to turn into a goddamn life <laughs> lesson, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Man, but- <laughs> man <laughs> some old bullshit. Now, but on, on a different note, though, uh, he, he showed, you know, here and there on different songs, even the one that I named that's not on this particular project, he showed um, signs that he, he there's some talent there, you know, it's just mixed in with, like, everything that's going on right now. He, he's he like a mix. Stories. Right. He, he actually can rap about a consistent topic. He stays, he, he can give you content. Yeah. But there's a lot of songs where he just doesn't. Doesn't, right. I agree. And 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 this is what I was kind of trying to say last week when we was talking about artists. Like, I like a lot of this young ratchet stuff, but some of it I just can't get with. Like, you gotta be talking about something, dog. Right. That, if that, you got a song or two when you talk about nothing, cool. That, you got a whole where, album when you're talking about nothing? Nah, man. That's where Vic got me so uh hit me with that hook and got me so heavy into him because um it's like he's don't get it twisted. He told you himself. It's, it's, it's not like this ain't ignorant. This is, you know what I'm saying? It's just that I'm giving you content at the same time. It's not like you're just, it's a it's a bowl of cereal. You scoop it. There's a cereal on the, on the spoon. You know what I'm saying? Some of these people, it's like you grab the bowl and it's just a spoon and you're scooping nothing. Like, <laughs> you just you're just listening to them say what they feel like saying and that's just it you know what I'm saying yeah they just yelling on a song right and just rhyming or making it sound cool or just making noise it used noises. to be so much harder to get to an area where you can actually record it look, look how we record right, right now right. you know normally you would have to go ahead and rent out a $175 an hour studio to do this And um, but I'm glad I'm glad the game expanded and people are able to do music in a lot of more ways and affordable ways also but let's not Let's not lose. But when you do that, you let you yeah, you get a whole bunch of dope artists, but the bullshit comes in with it. We still gotta we still gotta guard that door though. Like we still can't. It's gotta be a balance, yo. Right. And it's way out balance right now. That's at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. The balance is way out of whack. And this guy is like tiptoeing on the borderline of what could be balanced hip hop. Right. On his album. Like he showed you he can do it. Right. But he, he, he just didn't hold it up throughout the album, man. 73. 
I can't It needed work Right It needed work I gave it a 70 also Still Brazy YG Yo shout out to D At Patchwork Studios Man he did some work On this album He did some work On uh, My Crazy uh, My Crazy Life Okay that album too. That's I think what's he, up I think he flew out To California To work on this joint too So That's shout out to up. D man um, Still Brazy Keenan Daquan Ray Jackson He was born and raised In Compton California he grew up with both his mom and his dad, but uh, when his dad actually got locked up, that's when he kind of got a little bit more reckless. Uh, he would get heavy in the gang culture. He uh, started doing house shows where he would perform in house shows. Uh, he met Ty Dolla Sign and DJ Mustard through that, and they would uh, go around the town doing house shows, and they ended up becoming basically like the biggest thing in the city. Right. Uh, the buzz got bigger. He put a song out called Tooted and Booted with Ty Dolla Sign, and that basically got him his deal with Def Jam. And later, he was, not too long after that, he was signed with Jeezy CT World Label. Uh, Still Breezy is YG's second solo album. What do you think is Still Breezy, man? Still Stop Breezy. Still Breezy. <laughs> yeah, Still Breezy. Breezy. Uh, it's supposed to be crazy, but you know, his gang affiliation is Y is a B instead of a C. Yes! Yes! <laughs> um, I think this album is very solid. It's a complete album. I gave it a B at 90. I think it's fire. Uh, the production was tight. Lyrically, it was satisfying. The hooks was good. Uh, you know, uh, he he. It's funny because it, we're on the same, almost on the same week, or on the same episode talking about it. Him, Vic Mensa, and Pac. The stand-up political gangster points of view they bring. It's it's relatable. I'm not saying they're the same character, the same guys. What I'm saying is that, you know, just because you're in the street or just because you grew up in the street or you, you know, you affiliated with the street or certain things don't mean that you don't know righteous. And, you know, and um, that's where Pac got misconstrued a lot. And I'm going to blame media on doing that. You yep. know, they, they, they use one thing from our life to uh you, you know to tell a story so um you know yg may be a a, a, a a young gangster what his name stands for or whatever but you know he's a political politically he's straight in his head he he may be with some bs you know and i'm saying but it's not like he don't see righteousness you know and i'm saying or what's going on or that some things are right and some things are wrong you can see how the, the album starts he starts it with his dad basically telling him like Nigga, blame your mom. Like she ain't never wanted to leave yeah, LA. She ain't like, never want to leave Compton. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, I mean, man, look, there, there's always something good that comes out of something bad. Right. Like if he went and grew up in in Compton, I, I'm pretty sure he probably wouldn't even be who he is now. Right. He'd be a completely different person. Whether that be good or bad, you know what I'm saying. I will say that I feel like this is exactly kind of what like kind of like what you just said this is what i'm talking about like all the young dudes need to check it out this is a balance like he's he he's got his political songs he's got his ratchet songs he's got his conscious songs he's got his just ride out chill out songs like he, he he's got his gangster music up here for what you know his blood you know dancing and, and all of and that and it's still him and it's still him and it's and it's still dope right you know what i'm saying he found a way to pull it together um, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of Don't Come to LA. I don't not a real fan of the hook, but his verse, AD's verse, yo, I, I, I like this cat AD from Los Angeles. He's pretty dope. What I can say about that song is it's real LA. Yeah. Like yeah. even from the hook. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It, even the offbeat a little bit, it's LA. You know what I'm saying? So Absolutely. That, that's what I liked about that song. I love Who Shot Me. Yeah, I love that too. That that joint. I, Give me got just, shot. It's yo, stupid. Give me got shot. Yo, <laughs> stupid yo funny, you bro. ain't lying. Yo, I look like the storytelling. Yeah. The storytelling in that song. The storytelling in who shot uh, you know who shot me. Like he's basically, you know, I got a question with Lil Wayne. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a fan of uh why you hating with Drake at all. I'm not a fan of that song. It, at it's all. similar to his other single with Drake from his first album. Yeah. It's similar nah, I didn't to like that. that either. Right. Who do you love? <laughs> right. I didn't like that either. Bull Bomb and Belective, I love that joint. I, you know. I love the title. It's just it's funny, you know what I'm saying? It's not. It's one of those like put your car get in your car, ride around with the windows down. If you got a top, put the top down, just chill out. But this is what I'm saying. This is what we're saying again. Is a young guy that found a way to show us what he does and be creative with it. You know what I'm saying? Not just force feed us what he's doing. It's not like 
he's gang banging on the whole album. Nah, but I mean, there's, he's there's, showing there's you stuff. There's kind of stuff right. But he, he but gives you signs. Look, bull, bomb, and collective. We all know what that's about. Yeah, but is on the song. He's not just talking about shooting crips or anything like that but nah, you know nah, you know his, they ain't say nothing about shooting right crips i mean he joint. signed to a crip so that shows you where 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 certain people mentality is that we have to be bigger than certain things you know what i'm saying so yeah man i, I mean, gave I it a trying 90. to turn this into another life lesson but right. y'all should learn how to how the bloods and crips were actually formed <laughs> you know some police kind of caused the, the turbulence between them to begin with and right. it's still going on today man yeah what you gave this album? I gave it a seven, a okay. B. I think it's dope. It, it was. I was really close to giving it an A. Like okay. it, it's it's really good. The, al- the album is really good. It's just a couple joints that I just you know I couldn't get into. You know what's funny in my notes? I got features filled in nicely, but the only features I know is Drake, Wayne, and Nipsey. A lot of them dudes are from the West Coast. Right. That do uh, that do AD. I, I mentioned him to you like two weeks ago because okay. he put a project out. We might have to get to that pretty soon too because it. I don't really hear like real lyrics in him, but he's got a great delivery. He's got great presence on the track. Great rapping voice. He picks really good beats. So you know, and uh, you know, she wish she was like he just talking about girls trying to act like dudes and it's like. Really, like women are supposed to be better than guys. Like women right. are supposed to be better, better than men. There ain't no reason y'all should be acting like a dude. They always want to throw that double standard in our face, and I'm not. Y'all I'm, supposed to be our right. better half. Now listen, we supposed to, we held that at a certain level too. We supposed to be respectful and all that. And I'm saying Absolutely. whatever. Absolutely. And the man and hold down or whatever. But understand that y'all. We hold y'all at a certain pedestal, actually above us. So we expect, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We expect more from y'all. Like, I, it's hard to even explain, man. Like, nah, I, and what you're saying is 100% accurate. Like, cause we, we, we look at women like you're basically like our higher being. Right. And you're supposed to be better than us. Yeah, double standards. Yeah. We didn't make the double standards, but we still live by them. You know what I'm saying? Y'all still hold us accountable to them too. So I'm, I'm not big on all of them, but that's one of the ones that I will say that that's that's not just a double standard to me. That's just a true fact. I mean, but it works both ways because uh, uh, <laughs> this is crazy what I'm about to say because of the times we living in. Back at one time, a male wears jeans and a female can wear jeans, but a male cannot wear a skirt. And a female wears a skirt. You get what I'm saying? So my nigga. But nowadays, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Duh. Yeah. So we ain't even gonna go there. But you get what I'm saying? It's double standards <laughs> the other way too, because you know they they can do certain things or they can do certain things with their hair. But yeah, if we h- do on, certain things with our how, hair, how could a woman be with a dude wearing a dress? I, I don't understand. How can a how female could a woman be with a guy that's wearing tighter jeans? You know? How can a female be with a female that dresses like a dude? <laughs> uh, and on another note, <laughs> I gave it an 87 B. I think this album is dope. Right. Uh, <laughs> yo, um, yeah, sh- you know, uh, Still Brazy is a dope track. Ty Dolla Sign helped on that. Fuck Donald Trump with Nipsey, Nipsey Russell. Um, I, I, I love the title. I love the whole content of it, on did you, it. Did you notice Did you notice that uh, the F- he said uh, the FBI oh, edited yeah, they, a whole bunch of lines in that song? They, they cut him out completely. Oh, yeah. Um, well, there's a couple times where the song just kind of goes mute. Right. The FBI told him to take it. The- Man, that's crazy. It's, a, it's another song that happened on, too. Uh, black and brown love that songs more conscious right. police got away with murder right. I mean look man if you black and you and you can't appreciate that song man you, you got some serious issues like you really ain't paying attention cause your ass could be a target too a- and, any one of us yeah that that's serious man and uh like I said man he, he Ice Cube this is the type of balance I would actually expect from Ice Cube I, Ice Cube has a writing credit on she was uh she uh, she wish she was. I'm not really sure what for. He's not on the song. I don't know if it's sampling one of his songs or what, or maybe he wrote somebody's verse. But this is the type of balance I expect from an Ice Cube album. And for YG to be so young, getting this balance this early, 
That that's, that's a great dope. thing. Yeah, it's very dope. Th- th- there's a whole bunch of young guys in hip hop that's gonna keep this thing rolling around and and keep it moving. Right. And that are dope. But we need to listen to these guys and support these guys because they could easily go away. Also, you know what I'm saying, or start sounding different because they think that's what you guys want to hear. Absolutely, man. I I hope YG, you know, stays far away. I mean, you know, I know he got shot. I know he bounced back quick. But, you know, hopefully nothing like that happens to him again. Hopefully he can stay on up and up. Mustard is on the album? Mustard did, I think, one joint maybe, if even. I'm I'm not even sure. Nah, Mustard's not on it at all. Yeah. Uh, it's similar DJ, sound. DJ similar Swiss, sound. 1500 and nothing. Terrence, Marcus, uh, Terrence, Terrence Martin. Yo, that dude's a beast. If y'all know who he is, check him out. He has a jazz album. P. Lo, Ty Dolla Sign, and Hit Boy. I believe his all name is on a lot of uh, a lot of people's joints that we've done. Uh, he... Yeah, he he, he helped out a lot right. with Kanye's joint. Rihanna? Uh, yeah, he helped right. with Rihanna. Like, yeah, Terrence Martin helps out with everybody. Right. He, That's he, crazy. How you go from Rihanna to YG? He, he does That's everything. That's dope, though. He, did, like, he, has a, he has an album on Apple Music. It's, it's like, different because it's like, you know, if you like jazz music, you might get into it. Like, some of his hip-hop sound and beats. Right. It's just like, but it's like jazz music played on top of, sax- you'll hear a saxophone played over top of hip-hop beat. You know, then you got some real straight jazz joint. Terrence Martin is very gifted, man. Very big, very good dude, man. All right, 12 play. R. Kelly. You know, my mind's telling me no. <laughs> Everybody know that saying. Robert Sylvester Kelly, man. He was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. His mom was a singer. R. Kelly got into singing at eight years old. A lot of people may not know, but some people do know R. Kelly had a tough upbringing. He was abused. Uh, at a young age, he was 10 years old. Um, one of his family members that was 10 years older than him abused him. Uh, his first girlfriend drowned after being swept, you know, down a creek um, after being pushed in the water by some older kids. Uh, you know, he was hit by a stray bullet one day riding home on his bike. Man. You know, yeah, yeah, I know, right? He Jeez. attended Kenwood Academy in Hyde Park where he met his first music teacher that influenced him to sing and lead the basketball team. Uh, as a teenager, he would perform at the at the Chicago L train. You know, it's kind of like, you know, the New York train cycle and everything like that. Uh, he would uh, form a group called MGM, Musically Gifted Men, but that they ended up disbanding. And he ended up signing with Job Records um, with the group named Public Announcement. You know, Kel said that uh, the concept for Twelve Play came. Uh, he was uh, opening for Gerald Levert. And he was getting tired of like at the he'd be the opening act. A lot of people be coming in not paying attention. So he started talking to the crowd and stuff like that. And he would tell them like how you had a dream of sleeping with Mary J. Blige, <laughs> and it was very, you know, very foreplayish. And he had twelve things that they would do, and he would ask the crowd, "Could he sing it to him?" And like the girls would get really into it, like, "Oh yeah, yeah, sing it." And it, the song got so popular, like it wasn't even a real song. It was just like his piano player playing piano and he just kind of messed around over top of it. Right. It got so big that while he was on the road with uh, Public Announcement promoting Born in the 90s, their album, that they would say, nah, we don't want to hear that. We want to hear you perform 12 Play. Right. You know, that that's that's pretty crazy, man. 12 Play is actually R. Kelly's first solo album. Most people know that. What do you think of 12 Play, man? Um, it's very dope. I think it's a very dope album. I gave it a B at 84. I think um, it's soulful, soulful music, love and emotions. Uh, production wise, it was cool. Lyrics and content were amazing. Of course, you know, he's a genius, very well written. But uh, I, I think he was like ahead of his time because he, he would like sing his hooks and then kind of like rap. I was getting like a like a, a somewhat of a sense of like a LL. Well, you like got to think LL about the vibe. time because right. this is New Jack Swing time. So it's like he was doing like what Teddy Riley and all of them were doing too. So the up tempo songs like I like the crotch on you, uh, you know, summer bunnies and stuff like that, it was more like New Jack Swing. All the slow songs were not what anybody else was doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? That, and that's where I kinda I kinda think well, we know that's where he excels at. I I like that Absolutely. Kelly way better. Um God damn it, I like the way you do you, business. You know, and that's probably why I only gave it an 84 because I was looking for more like not to say that it wasn't emotions or any or feelings in this because there was, but it was more on a LL Cool J level than on a R. Kelly level to me. You know what I'm saying? I mean I I get what you're saying. Uh 
a lot of people gonna come for you though because you know this is considered a classic okay. I, I, I didn't i didn't give it a classic rate neither okay i think that this album has five legendary r&b songs that mostly anybody knows even if they don't even like r kelly your All body's right. calling Bump and grind. Run. Seems like you're ready. Yep. Sex me part one and part two and twelve play. Yep. Like any of them songs come on, you might not even know the name of the song, but you know them songs. Or even that it was on R. Kelly's first album. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And for you to have those big monumental songs on the same album, it's kind of like something Michael Jackson would do. Right. But I'm not saying this album is anything like Michael Jackson would do. Don't get me wrong. Kelly's wrote for Michael Jackson. Right. I, I don't know? think this is Kel's best work. No. I, I, that's my opinion. Th- it, this had... R. Kelly has so many hits. But those five are very big hits. And hit- I gave it a 94. And, it, and it's mainly off of the strength of those five songs. Okay. Because huh, uh, Homie Love a Friend is cool. Freak That Body is cool. I like the crotch on you. Uh, you know, back to the hood of things. Not really a fan of that. Our, you know, Dr. Dre's on that joint, too. I didn't he's even not even He's not even credited. <laughs> <laughs> but Dr. Dre's on there. But uh, I do like For You. I do like Sadie. You know what I'm saying? Those songs kind of have, like, some sentimental value to me. My dad would play them over and over and over again when I was a kid. So I love those songs. Uh, R-, R. Kelly excels at slow songs at right. this point in his career. Uh, I want to say when TP2 started coming out, that's when he started getting better with the at all the tempos. Right. And then by the time after that, any album after that, R. Kelly can do anything. Right. You know what I'm saying? He, he Don't get me wrong. He was well, writing I up mean, tempo once, songs for other people. Once he started, he, he was up to it like trapped in the closet one on one. It was like 101 of them. Yeah, and, that, and that's basically like theater right there. Right. That's what you I'm saying. What I'm saying? It's, so, it's, it takes a lot of... Uh, it takes a lot of talent for that. It's somewhat like freestyling a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You, you know when this album came out, you know R. Kelly couldn't read and write. When his first album came when out? When this album came out, he couldn't even read and write. He would freestyle this stuff because he he couldn't read and write. That's crazy. Yeah, and, and he, uh, he knows how to read and write now. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I've been in the studio. R. Kelly is one of the hardest working dudes ever he is the hardest working dude i've ever seen at the studio this dude would rent out 12 to 16 hour block section sections every day Crazy. seven days a week for like three four months straight like when he was doing the black panties album right. you know he was at the studio and every day he was there 12 16 hour sessions song after song after song like he do a song go to the next one do a song go to the next one the dude is a machine right when it comes to making music i, I know a lot of people like like to knock what you know the personal life stuff i ain't got no nothing nothing to say on that we talking about the musician well R. He, kelly even if we touch that subject i'm not saying it's excusable i'm yeah, not he was saying it's cool he was abused too, so, so it's he might think it's that subconsciously right. already there is you know so it's it's tough you know he was put in a in a predicament where probably the back of his mind is, is telling him this is okay is it okay it was done to you you know uh but not saying it's okay back to his talent and the music Yo, R. Kelly is a machine, yo. I've never seen nobody work as hard as that dude. Crazy. Nobody. I've seen a lot of people come through that studio. You know, Jeezy would book 12-hour session, section, sessions, but he wouldn't work as work, much. Work like three or four. Maybe. Right. No, don't get me wrong. There were days Jeezy came in there and worked his ass off. There were days he came in there and didn't do nothing. And Kells did the same thing. But most of the time, if Kells was in there, something was getting done. Right. And he would do countless songs. It, it it would make no sense. Like you'd just be like, "Dog, does this dude sleep?" Because he would go and do these songs, and then go to the club, and then come back to the studio. <laughs> and you'd be like, "Yo, when do you go to sleep?" Crazy. Like there were times with the studio, like because normally, the, like whenever the last session ends, studio opens back up. He would still be there, so like it would be no layover. He opened and the closed. The studio would never jump. close. Yeah, the studio <laughs> wouldn't even close because he'd still be there. Right. And like, okay. yo, the dude is a straight machine. A straight machine, yo. Right. Shout out to R. Kelly, man. He <laughs> is the best song generator. He is the best songwriter of the '90s 
2000s generation like the 2010s and stuff you're gonna have to change that up a little bit but from the 90s all the way to the early 2000s till R. kelly was, till, till i guess his situation nah because even then he was writing for other people he he was smart about it like he would take the hits and he give them to other people he was writing albums for ron osley at the time you know what i'm saying like he was writing songs for sierra he was writing songs for like michael jackson like the dude C- Celine Dion This dude You better be writing much- albums For Ron Isley He done cheated on this man He done, <laughs> che- he done cheated Caught his joint Slipping almost every yeah. video <laughs> <laughs> I'm like yo Does R-, R. Kelly Really just move To the neighborhood Ron Isley right, moved like, to yo, just be like, I'm gonna follow him around He, he gets bad he, joints I'm gonna yeah, follow him around Exactly <laughs> <laughs> Alright man That's been part 2 Episode 19 man Yep. Make sure y'all check back next week. We got four albums for y'all. We got a couple requests. Outcast, thank on you. Yep. We got a group, the internet, called Ego Death. Never really heard of them, but they're down with our future. Uh, we got Freddie Gibbs, Babyface Killer. Yep. And, uh, you know, more recently it was like the 20th anniversary of Reasonable Doubt. So we're going to do Jay Z Reasonable Doubt. Hold with the God, man. The God MC. Yeah, man. Make sure y'all check out the playlist. You know, yep. y'all got any requests, go ahead and email us at TRC Live at no nah, TRC at the report card live.com. That's right. TRC at the report card live.com. Check out the Instagram at TRC Podcast. Yes, sir. Check out the clothing at So Loyal Clothing Inc. Yes, sir. Check out the uh, custom card joint at So Loyal underscore customs. And you know this, man. Word. And um, yeah, just. Make sure y'all rate us, man. Rate us. We like, need the ratings. Comment, Likes, comments, su- rate. Subscribe. Subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Yes, sir. All that good stuff. Yeah, man. And um, on that note, peace. peace. You're still here. It's over. Go home. <laughs>